Good afternoon. My name is Marcus Woods, and I am with the MMBC Continuum here in Memphis, Tennessee. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today uh, on this um, seminar entitled Business to Consumer Track Workshop Intro into Business 101. And uh, our speaker today is Dr. Nashawn Branch, and he will be discussing how do you successfully transition from an employee to a business owner. And uh, personally, that's one of the most um, valuable uh, things as far as going from an employee to a uh, business owner. It's a very uh, invaluable um, opportunity and experience to be able to go on this journey. So um, in our presentation today, Dr. Branch will be discussing uh, how to do that successfully in the right way. And Dr. Branch, he has uh, 10, 10 years experience in the field of entrepreneurship, and he currently works as a small business specialist uh, here in Tennessee with a small business development center at Southwest Tennessee Community College. He's advised over 625 small to medium-sized businesses, including 54 startups, raising over $2.2 million in capital infusion. And currently, his extensive startups experience has allowed him to coach and facilitate training curriculums for 30 workshops to enhance students' connections between collegiate uh, subjects and real-world business. Dr. Dr. Uh, Nashan has earned a Doctor of Business Administration and a Master of Business Administration in Entrepreneurship from Jones International University, summa cum laude. He has also received his Bachelor of Science degree and communications from Bowie State University. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Nashawn Branch. Dr. Branch, thank you for joining us. Mr. Woods, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure, sir. Uh, I wanted to uh, start this out by saying, you know, congratulations if you're thinking about starting a small business. I think right now, um, post-pandemic is the opportune time because obviously, there are a lot of great opportunities out there. I know that we only have one hour to get uh, this presentation done. So I wanted to start with some basic ground rules if we can. Uh, number one, uh, because we are limited on time, um, if you can hold your questions off to the end or shoot me an email, I'll be happy to talk with you uh, privately. Uh, number two, if you have any confidential information, please do not share it here. Again, shoot me an email. I will send you, we can talk one-on-one -on -one and uh, we can keep your information private. And then number three, I, I, out of respect of everybody's time, um, I ask that everyone just mute your uh, volume. That way we can disseminate the information in a clear and concise manner. All right, so for this evening, I got an itinerary. And here's some of the things that we're gonna talk about as we go into depth about starting your business. We're gonna talk about ideas and validating the ideas in detail. We're gonna talk about how to craft a business model. I'm gonna give you some extensive tools, including the Canvas business map that I'll share with you and you can Google it if you don't have it or I'll send it. We're gonna talk about the extensive business planning process. We're gonna talk about the number one subject that everyone wants to talk about, of course, how to finance these businesses and where do we get the money from. We're gonna talk about it in the legal structures of the business and then other legal elements of the business. We're gonna talk about the, the uh, process of assembling a team. And then finally, we're gonna talk about all of the work that goes into launching your business. So at this time, I'm gonna share my screen because I have a PowerPoint presentation to share with you. And let's make sure, what are we doing? Let's make sure, I just wanna confirm with everybody and make sure that you can see my screen. Um, by the way, I saw, before I begin, I saw some familiar names in the, uh, that were registered. Uh, some of them uh, I know and some of you I don't know. And if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you at the end, please shoot me an email. I love to network and, and, uh, with you and talk about your business ideas. All right, so let's talk about small business startup, transitioning from an employee to a business. And we get a lot 
of folks that say they are sick and tired of their uh, job. They want to go from their, their companies they, uh, and they won't have their own ideas. We often hear the catchphrase, uh, this is my go home plan. We also hear uh, the, the story that I just can't take it anymore. I just want to do my own thing. And so part of my goal here is I don't want to uh, encourage you um, in a negative manner. What I would like to do is just give you all of the planning so the, and all of the information so you can best make the decision. So let's begin with the first, uh, a little bit of background information about who we are. Well, the Tennessee Small Business Development, believe it or not, is the SBA's largest uh, business program here. Across the United States, we have over 900 centers. And we primarily do two different things. Sorry, number one, we, number one, we help future entrepreneurs like yourself realizing a dream of own business, business ownership. And then we also assist existing entrepreneurs. So we look at it from both um, perspectives. If you come with us on an idea or an established business, we have resources and tools that we can help you. And we'll talk about those tools in depth and what differentiates us from everyone else a little bit later on. All right, so there are pri five primary services that we use. Obviously, believe it or not, starting a business is rooted in research. We provide professional research to help you undergird all of that business planning. What we have found out is that when starting your business, and I'm pretty sure you heard this cliche, you don't know what you don't know until it's too late. Well, part of our goal is to give you all of the data that includes uh, sample business plan, market statistics, competition analysis, and that way you have real world research. Here's the second thing that we do. We provide business plan assistance. What we have learned is that we have this cliche that we'll say entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship is a team sport. And I want you to think about that from the uh, later on. And what do we mean by it's a team sport? Well, if you work at your job right now, I guarantee you they have a human resources department, an accountant, a marketing team, management, and so on and so forth. If you're starting your business, one of the mistakes is you start it out by yourself. The great thing about our business plan assistance is that we work with you to help you draft the business plan. So you get that expertise and that one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting. Next thing, lending assistance. Okay, so let me, let's talk about this. We have in-depth relationship with lenders all across the United States. What we have found is that our lenders prefer that you work with us first, get your business plan and get it squared away first before you actually talk to them. And then once you get the business plan squared away, we can make soft introductions that will likely increase your chance of getting funding. Uh, we also do exporting help. Um, one of the things that we preach, uh, obviously, if you're thinking about starting a business, you must think globally. And that's where we come in. You have to have a larger customer base than just here in Memphis, Tennessee. And then finally, the last thing is government contracting aid. Um, we have found that a lot of businesses that exist here in Memphis, Tennessee, or people that are thinking about starting business, they actually leave money on the table because they do not consider or value uh, government contracting assistance. As a matter of fact, we have several clients that we have grown by using government contracting that they have actually excelled out of the program. We're gonna talk about that. Now, here's the most important thing I want you to remember about this slide. Right here where it says no cost for service, please believe it that there is no cost for the service whatsoever. It's totally free. Okay, so let me give you this contact information. If you have a pen, please take it down or write it down. Um, I want you guys to go and visit our website. It's www.tsbdc.org. And you can register for free counseling. You'll see the, the button on the left-hand side that says register. You're gonna fill out a quick survey of your information. And then you're gonna be assigned a counselor and we will call you and we will make an appointment around your schedule. Or you can call us at 
901-526-5085 or 901-526-9300. We actually have two locations. We have one in the Maxine Smith campus, and then we also have one in the Entrepreneur Center. So we have two locations, one in the city, one in the uh, suburbs that we can accommodate you and meet you around your schedule, or we can just talk on the phone. All right, so you're ready to start. So you come to us and you say, Dr. Branch, like I said, I have this idea. I got this go home plan. Uh, I think I have a business model, right? And you have all of these great ideas, correct me if I'm wrong. I guarantee you, if I talk to you personally, um, as you're driving home, you have an idea. When you're at home, you're probably thinking about an idea when you're at work. And the first thing that we preach is, it's great that you have an idea, but it's even better if we can validate the idea. What you do not wanna do is to waste time and money on an idea that is not feasible. And we'll talk about how do we test the feasibility of your idea. So here's what we recommend, and here's something to think about. Number one, the, does your idea actually solve a problem? Number two, does it offer a better and sometimes less expensive way or product or service? Number three, is it simple and practical? Number four, does it have a clear focus? Number five, can it be delivered quickly? Think about it in terms of an example is Amazon, two-day shipping, can it be delivered quickly? And then last but not least, does it anticipate trends and exploit growing markets? We're gonna talk a great deal about how companies are leveraging technology and all of the different partner resources that we have that are free or even reduced to help you anticipate trends as well as look at global markets. So this is how you can test your idea. And you say, well, Dr. Branch, I think I have it. It solves a problem. It can off is better. It's simple and practical, have a clear focus, can be delivered and anticipates trends. What is my next step? Well, our next step and what we're gonna uh, focus you on, and we're gonna walk you through this, is a really simple process we're going to create a business model. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of statistics. Um, the average entrepreneur or creative thinker will have 14 to 16 different ideas a year. So as you go through this process, what you would do is that you are, I'm gonna arm you with some tools that you can quickly and efficiently validate this idea by developing a business model. So there's a science to it. So, and as you go through this process, if you have an idea and it's not feasible, you can just throw that out and move on to the next one. Again, you do not have to waste time and money on ideas that are not feasible. And this is how we do it. Also, this is the difference between amateurs and experienced entrepreneurs. Experienced entrepreneurs know that if it's not feasible, they do not invest time and money and they just simply move on. They do not put any emotion. So what is a, a, a business model anyway? Simply put, you can read it right here on the screen. It's a business model, it's a description of various aspects of businesses. That's all it is. Basically, it's how the business is going to work. And the great thing about this presentation that I'm about to show you, this tool, is that someone has already done the heavy lifting for you and they have diagrammed what are all the components that go into a business model. So here's an example. Believe it or not, this is a one pager. And remember when I said that I'm gonna give it to you, uh, this tool so you can evaluate your ideas quickly. This doesn't take a lot of math. It doesn't take a lot of research. It is just a quick snapshot of what your business um, this model is gonna look like. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna briefly go over it and, and I'm gonna start in the middle where it says start here. So. The first question that we need to ask is what do you do? What is your value proposition? Meaning how do you benefit the customers that you are serving? What is the value that you bring? And we're gonna go, uh, it's, it's gonna make sense in a little bit. We're gonna go from right to left, sort of clockwise, and then come back up to the, the last one. 
So once you establish your value proposition and you say how you benefit your customer, and remember, you can just derive that strictly from testing your idea. I want you to think about how do you interact with your customers? What do you mean? I mean, do you do it primarily online? Is it face-to-face? -face? Do you use social media? Where is your client and how do you reach them? One of the things I want you to think about is what is the purpose of understanding or asking these questions? And the number one purpose is I want you to get out of your mindset and think about the business from what you think it is versus how your customer perceives. So we're going to think about it from the perspective of what does your customer want? Where are they located? And we're going to bring the product to them. So move it over to our, our, our next one or the one down. How do we reach them? Some businesses, they work face-to-face. Uh, -face. They have a storefront. Um, some businesses now are transforming their, uh, their business model to online. What are your distribution channels? How can you get it to them quickly? Are you using FedEx? Are you using Amazon? What is it? How do I reach them best? Moving over to your right. We're going to um, look at, I want you to think about how do you help them? This is very important because if you want to develop a business, you think about what their problem is and then you sell them the solution. I'm gonna say that again. The, re the reason that you do this is so that you can get out of your mind about what you think the business is and think about it from your customer perspective. So I want you to think about how do you help them? Do you, are you providing a product that's cheaper, quicker? Are you providing it in value? How do you uh, help them? Now we're gonna move down to our right clockwise. Here's a question that I want you to look and think about. How much money will you make? This is probably one of the most important blocks on this page. Here is why there's this cliche that says, if it ain't making uh, dollars, it's not making sense. And if it's not making money, it is a hobby. So I want you to think about this in terms of how much money will this generate? And there's an easy solution or easy formal, formula to calculate this. Simply put, you multiply your product times your customer. So if you're looking at a customer base and the customer is $1,000, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 1,000 customers, and you're going to charge them a dollar then you know that the revenue that you're going to make is $1,000. And what that do, what that is going to do is going to get you to understand of how big the market is versus how small. If the market is too small, then you know this business is not feasible. All right, next, the, probably the second most, in question, uh, most important question is, how much is this thing going to cost? Here's why this is important, because as we strategize and we get in the business planning phase, the first round of financing normally comes from the owner. Or if you take a loan, most of the lenders are gonna to wanna to know how much is it gonna to cost to start this business. This gives us a clear indication if, for example, if the business is too expensive and you don't have enough money, then either you can't start the business or we have to look for additional funds. So we wanna make sure that the business is fully capitalized, we want to make sure that we have enough resources to actually launch the business successfully. All right, so we're going to move up. We talked about who do you help a little bit. I want you to also think about your partners. Here's why. Again, we have this cliche. Entrepreneurship is a team sport. If you go out and you get customers, you're only limited by time and money. But if you extend yourself and you develop key partnerships, then they can also make referrals. Now you have multiplied your workload and your sales funnel. So I want you to think about who can we partner in this business? You know, it, whether it's Amazon online, uh, FedEx or whoever, how many partners can we uh, gather to support us to help us get more clients? Then we're gonna move over to your next one. How do you do it? Simply put, what are your key activities? Is it a product? Are you manufacturing it? Are you just reselling it? Meaning you're just buying it for a dollar, sell it for two? How do you do it? How do you get involved and get engaged in the actual day-to-day -day of the business? Because most of the time you're gonna be spending 
doing key activities. If, this, if it's a developing a product, that means you're gonna be building the product. Next one, what um, key resources do you need? So sometimes we think about resources in terms of cash, but also some businesses need equipment, they need software, they need human resources, they need all kinds of things to help them to grow and actually establish a business. And so again, just to uh, reiterate, this is a one pager and I'm gonna see the, if you shoot me an email, I'm, I'll send you a copy or you can just Google it. A lot of entrepreneurs that keep this in their cars or they keep them in their offices because they may think of an idea and they will just quickly jot it down and it helps them, excuse me, to uh, get through their business idea a lot faster. All right, so remember when I said that the, the majority of time we're gonna do market research, I wanna bust your bubble right here quick. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where we got this, but somewhere along the line, people thought that uh, starting a business was sexy and it, I don't know if it's the shows or whatever, but that's not the reality of it. Most times, small business owners and entrepreneurs, they're doing a great deal of research. They're always trying to figure out how to do their business better. So what do I mean by that? They're, they're trying to figure out customer demographic information. They're trying to figure out who their competition is. They're doing market research. They're looking at, and some of the places that they're looking at is trade information, US Census demographic data, business groups, utilizing your local chamber of commerce and small business development centers. They work with universities, believe it or not, a lot of them um, offer internships for students to come and do research for them. Um, they're in startup accelerator programs, they enter in competitions, and then they are constantly talking to customers. And I wanted to make sure that I reemphasize this. A large majority of your time as a small business owner or an entrepreneur is actually talking to your customer and figuring out what it is that they need and then what it is their problem is or their pain point and then supplying them with the solution. So it's a long, tedious and arduous of pro process, but I think uh, I wanted to make sure that I put that up front so you know how much work is, is actually being done. All right, so you get to this point, you've talked to customers, you develop your Canvas business map, you validated your idea, you did some research and you say, well, what's next? What, you know, I'm ready to start. And we'll say, no, you're not ready to start. First of all, our next step is that we have to develop a sound business plan. We do not recommend that you start any business without a business plan. And then studies and then statistics back it up. The, um, as a matter of fact, if you start a business uh, without a business plan, this, the research says that you are 90% likely to fail because you haven't thought it all the way through. And I think personally, before you invest money and your time, and your energy into something, you wanna make sure that you have the best chances of success. So what exactly is a business plan? Well, here is a, is a everyone understands this, the who, what, where, how, when, and why. It is in detail of how this business is gonna make money. That is all it is, there's nothing more complicated than that. And I would even, even say to go further is that if you cannot complete the business plan, you cannot articulate it on paper, you're not gonna be able to uh, implement it in real life. So this is like our first test. Is the business plan feasible? And let's talk about it for a little bit because I wanna demystify all of the, of, 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 the, uh, of the information that you've heard. And I wanna make sure that, is, that you understand that it is not complicated at all. Um, a business plan is nothing but quantitative and qualitative research. On the front end is the qualitative, and on the back end is the quantitative, meaning numbers. That's all it is. But essentially, you're going to just write down how is this business going to make money. So here's some of the things in the, in the qualitative part, the first part. Obviously, is the summary, and that is probably the most important part of the business plan. Um, I'll tell you why, and if you're watching this, you're going to get your money. You, you're going to get your value from watching this because most bankers, investors, venture capitalists, whoever, do not get past the executive summary. Um, I can tell you by working with numerous bankers, they're very busy. Uh, they get approached all the time by people wanting money. And so their time is very valuable and you only have 
a first time to make a good impression. So you want to make sure that you have an executive summary that encompass all of these different elements. Now, the good news is that most times we write the executive summary last. That is a pro tip. And the reason why we write the executive summary last is because we're just going to extrapolate all of the data out and we're going to put it into the, the executive summary. And so we know what are the key point or the key touch points that all of the bankers and investors, employees, partners, all of them are looking for. And so we can advise you. So the executive summary is very important. Please do not overlook that. Okay, so next one, business, basic business concept. What business are we in? Uh, essentially, do we have one clear business model? And then hopefully by this time, you've already developed that and you have uh, with the Canvas business plan. Market analysis, that's a pretty easy one because if you work with us with the Tennessee Small Business Development Center, um, as I stated earlier, we have a lot of tools that can help you do market analysis. And I can tell you that all of those tools are very expensive. They're what larger corporations use when they do market analysis. And we can provide that for you free of charge. Um, we have tools, for example, that we can pull out customer demographics. We can tell you, you know, how many kids they have, what their dog's name, how much they make, everything that you uh, need to know about your customer. We also have market analysis where we do uh, market statistics, we do competition, how much are they charging, where they're located. We can even tell you where your customers are located in a heat map. So we can do a great deal of that. Marketing plan, very important. How are you going to appeal to a customer? And I'll give you, for example, if I was to appeal to a young lady that was in a, um, a college, she would probably be on a different social media platform than an older guy that's in his 40s with kids. And we're not going to be on the same page. We're not going to be looking at the same thing. So a, a marketing plan is essential for helping you to understand how to reach your customer in a quick and efficient manner. Next one, location. Oh, let me give you the, the research on that. So the, the research says that if you are within five miles of your customer base, your customer is more likely to patronize your business. And I'll give you an example. Um, we, of course, we have Walmart here in, in Memphis, but we also have Dollar Store or the, uh, Dollar Tree. Well, if you notice, there are many more Dollar Trees than there are Walmart. What the, what the uh, Dollar Store is doing is that they're placing their locations probably within five miles of each other. So that way, instead of running all the way to Walmart and fighting in those Walmart uh, lines that we like, you just will go into the dollar store and get whatever it is you need. And they're doing very well. They're actually competing very well with Walmart. And last thing, organization and management. Who's running this thing? Do we have clear defined hierarchies? Does everybody know their job description? Does everybody know, uh, are there any gaps that we need to fill? For example, there may be some things that we need to outsource to export to experts. These are all the things that you should consider in the first part of the business information section. And so moving on, the, the last part is pretty simple. It's, it's, um, I'm going to tell you guys a little story. Um, I teach at, uh, I used to teach at University of Memphis as well as Lemoyne on College. And I used to hear students say all the time that they were just intimidated by math. We don't like math. And I would assure them that everything in your financial section is nothing but addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's nothing more complicated than so here are some of the things that uh, your financial uh, section, the summary of sources and uses of funds, obviously where you're getting the money and then what we're going to use the money for. Um, your income statement. Income statement is nothing but how much money is coming in the door, how much money is going out the door for expenses, and then finally what's left over. Cash flow. Simply put, what is the business doing with the cash and how are we managing it? Balance sheet is always one that, that that people are intimidated, but it's nothing but assets, liability, and then finally owner's equity. The assets is how many, how many tangible uh, assets do you have? Liability is loans. And then finally, how much money that you put in your business? And then we look at other things. We look at key ratios. Key ratios is nothing but division. It just gives us a snapshot on how effective we're managing. We always talk about break even. Break even is nothing but at what point does the business start is actually making money. 
Um, and then we also put in their worst case scenario. One of the telltale signs of an expert business person is if they plan for the best, they hope for the best, and then they also plan for the worst. We wanna make sure that we have a contingency plan. And that's extremely important because last year we went through COVID-19 and a lot of businesses did not have a contingency plan. Um, and then finally, we just wanna articulate what are key assumptions that we made. For example, we talked a little bit about how many uh, businesses, how many customers that we have, multiply that by the, um, by the price of the product and that's our revenue. Well, we wanna just talk about how do we get the customers? Where were we talk, what, how much money did we spend on marketing and we're just articulating. So those are like the, the key sections of a business plan and it's not very compl uh, complicated. However, if you feel like that this is way too complicated for you, no worries, we got your back. Just make an appointment with us and we're running through, running through with you. And we have some really great software like Live Plan, and we also have free workbooks and classes to kind of walk you through it on a one-on-one. -on -one. I guarantee you, you can get it done. All right, here's some other things that we look at uh, if you're needing some uh, help with your business plan. Obviously talking with us, but you can use Google. We, we have businessplan.com. We use Live Plan. You can book a session with us, of course. USSBA is a great resource. SCORE is a nonprofit organization. They're our sister organization. They're a, a group of uh, dedicated volunteers to help. They're great. And then we also have various sources and other books. Right now, I think we have over, I want to say 77 different partner resources that we can help you with. All of the information is available and therefore you don't have to sort of, you know, rewrite the, the plan. All we can do is just we can use that research to help you get that in there, get the uh, information in there to kind of help you along. All right, so this is the exciting part that everyone cares about. You know, you have this idea, you validated the idea again, you uh, completed your business plan, you've been working hard and you say, well, now I need to raise money. Here is where you also get your money uh, work today. So we have identified seven different ways that people use money. And I guarantee you, as I go through all of them, I guarantee you, I'll, you'll probably, uh, you miss one or two. And so hopefully this can help you along and we'll talk about it in, in detail. All right, so we have self-financing, we have business loans, we have crowdfunding, we have venture capital, we talk a little bit about grants, private investors, and then contests. So I'm gonna go through all of them briefly uh, uh, so you can check it out. All right, so as I stated, most businesses, when they start, they start with personal funds. We even have folks that come to us and they say, well, I don't have any money. I have a great idea, I have a, uh, uh, you know, what do I do? And the first thing we do is we put them on a budget where they actually save. And you'd be surprised when you're motivated and you believe in yourself, how fast you can save money. So yes, we have personal funds. We also have people that use their own personal credit cards. Perfectly okay, no problem. If you have one, you can use that to, to pay for some of those startup costs. The one thing that you should consider, of course, is the high APRs, um, and you can't pay your employees on credit. Here's another one that um, I wanted to talk about, crowdfunding. This is the new one on the block where people are using crowdsourcing to help fund their business, and they're doing very well. Again, it's speaking to appealing or using technology to appeal to a global audience and get um, investors on a wider scale. Uh, another one, family and friends. Why we, why we put that up there? Obviously, they love you, right? They believe in you, um, and they, they're more likely to invest in you than a stranger. However, please be advised, we have seen that a lot of business owners or a lot of family, they become very sophisticated, and they too want to see a business plan before they invest in you. Angel funding. We have a, a large network of angel investors. Um, we have people here in Memphis that are dedicated and they really want to see Memphis grow. They, this is their hometown. And so we may be able to uh, introduce you to them. Uh, traditional bank loans, line of credits. As I stated, we have a large network of banks. And one of the things we're, um, we're really good at is starting out with just a simple line of credit. 
a line of credit simple to a credit card. And once you use it, uh, you just repay it back. So you don't have to worry about anyone taking a share of your business. We also have relationships with online lenders. These are people all over the United States like Cabbage. They get quick access and control uh, to your money and you're able to take as much as you need it. It's in the short term. And they're um, normally they uh, give loans for under $150,000 and that is without collateral. Again, a great resource. Um, we also have other lenders that are traditional loan products. Um, it takes a little bit longer but yes, we do have access to online lenders. Um, SBA loan, obviously everyone knows about the SBA loan. And then if you are going into a entrepreneurship venture, we also have contacts to a venture capitalist that are willing to invest money in. So I, I wanted to make sure that you are aware of all of these different uh, lenders and these sources out there. And I think that's part of the expertise that we give because we can help you to develop a fundraising strategy to make sure that you get fully funded. All right, so here are some of the, fun, the funding factors that I want you to consider. Again, uh, going into the reality of what it's like to start a business, the application process. Uh, in the past, the application process could have been anywhere from 30 to 45 days. However, as a result of the pandemic, what we saw were some banks literally had to shut down. So the application process has taken a long time. And unfortunately, um, a lot of them are behind. So we ask that you be, be patient. And then we kind of coach you through that on how to do, go through the application process. I want you to understand also how much time it takes to apply and actually get the decision. Um, realistically, what we're looking at is about 45 days uh, on the average. So just consider that. Um, convenience and funds available, meaning how fast do you want uh, the money? How fast do you need it? Can you wait a little bit and get a better term or shop it around? I want you to also be aware of you can negotiate repayment options. For example, uh, we have construction companies and in the, the, uh, in the um, winter time, they unfortunately they could not afford to, to make payments now they're bouncing back because the cost of lumber and everything is so expensive but yes some folks fail to understand that they um, have to negotiate their repayment options i want you to also consider what is the true cost of it so what do i mean by true true cost that includes the apr origination and closing fees and factor that into your financials and then finally, customer service. I want you to consider as you weigh the bank, is it a small bank? Is it a large bank? And finally, what is their customer service if you really need to talk to someone right now? Now, if you're the type of person that do all your banking online and you're totally happy about it, this may not be applicable. But if not, you need to talk to someone uh, right away to get a uh, decision, that may be something you want to consider. All right, so that was the financing and hopefully I have given you some things that you may not have considered. Again, contact us individually and we'll be happy to develop a funding plan for you. All right, now you got your funding, you got your plan, you, you're all squared away and ready to go. We're, guess what? We're still going to slow you down. We're going to say, wait a minute, we have now that you have everything in, in, in your ducks in a row, our first step is that we have to protect you. So what do we mean by that? Well, we're talking about actually incorporating the business. So there are four different ways of how we structure businesses. And I'm just gonna go over them briefly because I know we're short on time, including the sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and of course, what everyone uh, looks for, limited liability company or corporation. So let's talk about a sole proprietorship, pretty simple. If you have a social security number, uh, you want to start a business, that is essentially all you need. It is essentially one owner. Please be advised, there's no legal separation, so it's passed through, meaning that whatever you make at the business, that constitutes as your salary, and you just pay the taxes um, on the salary that you make. Um, the exempt from franchise and excise tax, and we'll talk about a little bit. Now, here's the disadvantage of it. Okay, so there, there are little to no fringe benefits, and what do I mean? Number one, you're 100% liable. For example, if you're starting a lawn care company and something happens when you tear up someone's property, you can be sued and your personal assets 
can be uh, garnished as a result because you have 100% uh, liable for what happens. You are essentially the business. Here's the also another thing that we talk about and we see a lot. Uh, business is all with the death of an owner. So if you are planning on passing on a business to your future generation, your children, this is not for you. If you want to start a business and pass home wealth, you want to think of a, actually a company or LLC, and we'll talk about that because you want to pass on those assets. All right, next one, partnership. Same as the first, but now we have two people in the mix. Here's the problem with that. Now, instead of you being liable, now both you and your partner are liable. Also, if you are in the type of person where uh, you're headstrong, you have egos, and most folks that start businesses are, um, we found that they have a lot of disagreements between partners. And how do we separate that? How do we move forward? How, what happens if we have a husband and wife and they get divorced and we have this partnership? So there's a, there's a, a lot of disadvantage uh, with partnerships. Obviously, uh, same rules apply upon the death or change of a partner, uh, the business dissolves. So if your partner dies or something happens, then the business is no longer effective. We don't, we don't get a lot of partnerships and we kind of stay away from it for obvious reasons, but we just want to make sure that you're aware of all of the information. All right, corporations, C corporations or S corporation. This is normally for entrepreneurs. So what do I mean by entrepreneur versus a small business? So entrepreneurs, if you give you an example, it's like an Amazon or a Facebook. It's a large corporation. And essentially, uh, what the reason why it's structured is because they sell shares of the company to either angel investors or venture capitalists or even when they become publicly traded companies. So here are some of the advantages. One or more shareholders, obviously, if they're selling the shares. It is a separate legal entity. So if the business gets uh, sued, the owners or the shareholders are not liable. Uh, the employees of a corporation are paid a salary and they also have to have benefits. And finally, the advantage is it's easy to raise capital, again, by selling stock. But here's some of the disadvantages to consider. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to start. Uh, the costs are a little bit more. And then there are more administrative duties. For example, you have to have board of directors meeting. You may have to uh, elect a board. Uh, and so uh, those tedious tasks may not be applicable if you're starting a small business. So speaking of a small businesses, this is what most folks do uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee. They start a limited liability company. I'm going to briefly explain why. So here are the advantages. You have, obviously, you can have more than one member. And the people that own the business are called members. It is a separate legal entity from yourself. So if the business gets sued, basically all that is uh, the person can get is what the business has in the account. You are obviously you're not responsible for the uh, liability of the business. It's limited liability. In this model, the owners draw a salary. That's obviously a good thing when you get paid. And also you can sell membership interest to folks. Again, it's a formalized way of getting investors. Now, here are the disadvantage. Um, it costs a little bit more, obviously, than a sole proprietorship or a uh, partnership. However, I have found that recently you can start one, the administrative cost to start one is only for uh, $40. And then I found that, you know, with the franchise tax for here in Tennessee, which you can't get out of, it's going to be 300. So you can start it with a pretty small fee. Um, you don't have to have a board of directors meeting. Essentially, all you have is members and what you guys decide is how the business uh, uh, go. So most folks start with a legal, uh, with an LLC. However, if you become a member, we're going to hook you up with an accountant. And that way you can, uh, and they will have professional tax strategies and they can square your way and advise you on the best and we do that. All right, so here are some of the legal elements I want you to consider before starting a business. Uh, first of all, business registration here in Tennessee. Yes, you have to have the business registered uh, uh, with the state of Tennessee. Um, I want you to also think about intellectual property. We get a whole host of businesses that did not know that they have intellectual property. And why that is significant 
is that if you or if your competitors or someone else is using your intellectual property, you can sue and get paid from them. And then finally, uh, well, not finally, insurance. We want to make sure that you're covered legally through insurance. Um, we talk a little bit about the landscaping and you have the adequate amount of insurance for a great price. And then finally, the licensing, making sure that you have all of the proper licenses that you have. So I want to sum up this a little bit and talk about which one is right for you. Again, going back to the cliche, as you can see, entrepreneurship is not is a entrepreneurship is a team sport. One of the things we want you to do is we want you to seek professional and legal financial advice. Do not try to go at this thing alone. Let the professionals help you. We have those research, those resources. Also, as I stated, we're going to do a lot of research. So if you like reading, definitely entrepreneurship is for you. The average entrepreneur reads one book a week. We definitely want you to talk with us at the TSBDC clients. Um, doing research on internet books and other sources. I wanted to give you some of these legal forms and businesses uh, to review. Um, obviously we have business.gov register and corporation. That's one way of uh, getting a legal service. And then here's another one. Uh, Tennessee did a great job of providing uh, guides for corporation partnerships and LLCs in the state of Tennessee. So this is their website. And don't worry if you don't get it, I'll provide it for you. And then next, I want to talk about assembling your team. Great time to talk about this. So yes, we know entrepreneurs have great ideas and you guys have big egos. And well, I want you to, got, I want you to think about it in terms of how do I develop myself and have experts around me? So we have outlined, these are essentially all the people that you're going to bring to you or we're going to help you develop that's going to help you to validate your business. Obviously, the business mentor, mentor with TSBDC. We're gonna talk a great deal with the banker. We're gonna obviously get consultation from our lawyer, make sure we're legally squared away. We're gonna talk with the accountant, make sure we have proper tax uh, planning and strategy so we don't get ourselves in hot water. Uh, we're gonna talk to a great deal of insurance agents, make sure that we adequately cover it. And then right now, there are a lot of marketing people that are available that you can consult with that will help you to get your customers. Our goal is that when you open your business on day one, you wanna have a large customer base. We don't wanna start the business and have no customers. We wanna have the customer in place. So these are all the people that, you, that, that we're gonna work on getting and together as a team, we're gonna develop the business. So you've done all that and you say, Dr. Branch, I'm ready to launch it. I've, I've, I've been working, you know, the last three months. This is, you know, this is incredible. What do I do next? How do I actually launch the business? And I'm going to slow you down. I'm going to say, guess what? There's more work to be done. So what we've done is just give you a visual graphic of how much our work is involved in actually launching the business after you have done all of that. So we got, we broke it down in three different sections. There are pre-release the release, and then the post-release. So in the pre-release, I'll just read some of these briefly. Uh, everything from message testing, developing videos, partner uh, recruitment, infographic, prospect newsletters, uh, developing influencer relationship. Remember we talked about social media, eBooks, landing, articles, you name it. There's a lot of work to be done on the front end before we actually launch this business. And then you get out, you say, well, we're gonna release it. We're gonna uh, launch our business. And I'm gonna say, great, here's some more work we have to do. Here's a sampling, events, playbooks, sales enablement, demos, checklists, lead generations, tutorials, outbound lead generation, everything that you need to actually launch the business. And then you're gonna say, well, Dr. Branch, I'm tired, I'm upset. I'm ready to get this thing going. This has been, a, been I didn't know it was gonna be like this. And I'm gonna say, wait a minute, now we have to do the post release. So what does that mean? Oh, we have to do analyst reports. How about retaining program or retention programs for our employees to make sure they stay, right? Customer advisory boards, developing case studies, referral programs in which we incentivize future customers 
right? Our, our existing customers to refer future customers to it. Testimonials, how important is that right now, especially if we start talking about e-commerce platform. And then momentum marketing, how do we continue to go and launch new products and new services as they roll out every day? So hopefully I have given you a thorough assessment and give you an, an idea of actually how much work goes in to transitioning from an employee to an actual business owner. And if you're interested, here are our next step. Uh, plain and simple, I want you to attend the next TSBDC workshop. We have several coming up, including government contracting, business planning. We have all sorts of uh, government uh, um, accounting that te uh, teaches you how to uh, uh, do tax strategies, as well as programs or webinars that teach you what are all the things that you need before you go to the bank to improve your success for a loan. I want you to schedule an appointment with us. Come talk to us one-on-one. -on -one. Everything is confidential. We will not disclose your information. I want you to also start using these tools right now. As you're driving down the street and you have these ideas, complete the Canvas business map. Matter of fact, I tell you what I do. I make about 20 of them. And I just keep them on hand with me. And as I think about an idea, I'll stop for five minutes and I've gotten so good I can fill it out. And then I can tell you if the business is feasible. And then I, if it's not, I'll throw it away. To, and if it is, I'll try to go for it. Also, finally, uh, uh, assembling your winning business squad. Remember, you don't take anything away from this webinar. I want you to remember that entrepreneurship is a team sport. And I want you to get in the mindset of working with a team. All right, so that is the conclusion of our presentation. I'm going to stop sharing this, the, my screen. Uh, Mr. Woods, how much time do we have left? Uh, we have uh, just a couple of minutes. So we do have some questions in the chat. Uh, someone wanted to know how to reach out to you. If you okay, no problem. Information. Let me give you this website. Uh -huh. www dot T as in Tango, S as in Sierra, B as in Bravo, D as in Delta, C as in Charlie dot org. And I want you to go to the website and I want you to request free counseling. And we will get back, most time we get back to folks within an hour or two, but most time we get 24 hours and we will contact you. If not, they have the contact information on the website. They have our phone number, our email address, and a little bit about us. So yes, go to tsbdc.org. All right, Dr. Nishan Branch, we uh, definitely thank you for joining us today and hope that all of our attendees enjoyed today's presentation. Um, feel free, everyone, to join us for our next uh, series of workshops coming up at three o'clock on the dot. So. Uh, at this time, we give you guys an opportunity to uh, reset, and we look forward to having you back with us at 3 o'clock. Dr. Branch, thank you so much. Enjoy the information you've uh, presented to us. Thank you, Mr. Woods. It's my pleasure. Uh, yes, sir. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.